It's time for Tales of Terror, only on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. Welcome, friend. Have a seat by the fire. Make yourself comfortable. Rumors were easily spread in small towns like Red Hill, and given time often became the stuff of local lore. In recent years, odd incidents occurring just outside city limits such as animal mutilations, creature sightings, and unearthly shrieks in the night had given rise to a new legend. It was said that a pale, bloodthirsty monster roamed the lush farmland under cover of darkness. Most of these salacious stories centered around the location of a country store, abandoned to the elements and encroaching vegetation. Some nearby paranormal investigators even proposed a rather wild, unsubstantiated theory that within the old Langford store was a nest. A daylight hour refuge for this mythical vampiric creature. You're listening to Campfire Radio Theater. Tonight we bring you the concluding chapter of our small town tale of family bonds and the undead. The play is called Ties of Blood. On my route again, or at least it seems that way. Dropping off the latest edition, I feel that sense of menace that always creeps into the back of my subconscious. But of course, I'm not really on my route, am I? I'm dreaming again. Maybe this is what happens when you get zapped by a stun gun. My pants are damp. Oh, Jesus, did I wet myself? Hey, you. Wake up. Huh? What? I'm lying on a dusty wooden floor. I'm inside the old country store now. My hands and feet are restrained. The figure seated a few steps away is the stalker from the van. What are you... What are you doing? Checking your blood. I collected a sample while you were unconscious. It's a rapid test. They prefer certain types. They? What are you talking about? Same as you or I might prefer cherry cheesecake over key lime pie. AB negative is coveted, but less than 1% of the population possess it. I'm told it has a sweet flavor. Why? Why are you... Why am I doing this? Well, human blood is a commodity. My clients hunger for it. They need it for survival. You know, just like a common street junkie looking for a fix, they require someone to provide it. What are we even talking about here? Uh, You're not up to speed, are you? Let me explain. 500 years ago, these creatures hunted unchallenged. But in this modern age of forensic techniques and cameras on every corner, one who has such appetites must be discreet. Our blood-sucking friends have been effectively defanged by technology, pale soy boy shadows of what they once were. Only the apex predators among them still stalk and drink from victims with impunity. I'm not sure if this man is insane or what, but I figure if I swallow my fear and engage in conversation, it's my best hope of survival. 
You don't really believe all that, do you? Vampires aren't real. They're just delusional posers. Oh yeah, I sell to those assholes too. The posers, the goths. Can you believe some of them even fall for the fake blood? Uh, here's a tip. Don't try that with a real vampire. I want to ask what happened to Maddo, to Amy Montross. I'm too afraid. Smile for the camera. Oh, lovely cheek structure. They'll dig that. What's that for? Some of the more upscale clients prefer to see what they're getting. I got a customer in Chicago. She pays handsomely for donors. Donors? Yeah, the beauty of a donor is that uh, she and her cohorts will have access to you, a living, breathing blood bank which will replenish itself over time. Unlike our voracious friend Fangbone, she won't mindlessly bleed you dry. Hold on. Fangbone? Ah, oh, lucky you. You didn't get a chance to meet him, did you? Well, he lives below in the basement. Uh, not sure what his real name is or if he ever even had one. Sometimes they go feral. No one really knows how or why. What is he, a, a dog? <laughs> No, 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 no. He's he, he's one of them, but uh, he's different. I found him homeless and malnourished. I took him in like a stray. He's an interesting pet. Um, does an outstanding job guarding the property, as your friend found out. What are you going to do with me? Yeah, relax. You're not going to end up like your friends below. At least as long as you behave yourself. Oh, Christ on a cracker. Who is it now? Hey, what's it? Open up. I need a couple pints. It's late. Come back during business hours. Are you kidding me? These are business hours. Hey, you're not due for a couple of days. You need to make it last longer. Are you selling or not? Give me two pints or else I go somewhere and take it the old-fashioned way. Son of a bitch. All right. All right, all right, all right. Sorry. Didn't realize I was interrupting something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Certainly can't say I'm sorry to see Corey at this moment, but why is he here? So, what's up with the girl, Woodson? Is this your idea of a date? Hey, mind your own business. Oh, I get it. You're selling her to the brood. Chicago cartel? That's where she's headed? What's it to you? Two pints, right? Jesus, Woodson. She's just a kid. I'm 22. Shut up. Here you go. How about her? <laughs> she's way out of your price range, hotshot. I'll take her. Oh, the hell you will. You ain't got that kind of dough. Not enough to afford a donor. I'll give you a couple grand down payment tonight. Make weekly payments. Installment plan? Yeah, I don't think so. Enjoy your fix. You want the car? <laughs> uh, what am I going to do with an 80s vintage Iroxy? Cruise for chicks? Get out of here. She's mint. Collector car these days. I'll throw in the Harley I'm rebuilding. I, I don't get it. What's your deal with this girl? Just hate to see it happen to her. Right. Since when did you develop a conscience? Since I figured out your game, Woodson. I know what you do to these girls before you ship them off to Sylvia and her crew in Chicago. No, you don't know anything. Oh, I guess you probably didn't fill her in on what kinky fun you got planned. It's time for you to leave. Yeah, you're one sick fuck. <sighs> you, out of here, now. All right, all right. One last thing, Woodson. How much you weigh? Why? You selling Ginny Craig now? 10% of body weight is blood, you know? Even low lives like you. Well, hell, I bet you're flowing with nearly two full gallons. <laughs> Type O, is it? Now you hold on. I'm the only bank for you blood junkies in a hundred mile radius. There's gonna be a riot if something happens to me. You know that, don't you? My kind adapt. We always do. Yeah, well, I, 
I provide a public service. It's beneficial for everyone. Keeps the streets safe from your kind. Untie her. <sighs> All right. All right. All right. Got a ball sack on you, pal. <laughs> you gotta hand it to you. I mean, judging me after all the blood on your hands? Oh. You're as much a monster as any of them. How many lives have you taken to, to satisfy your appetite? At least I mitigate the slaughter. Yeah, you're a real Samaritan. Woodson! Shit, shit, shit! Hold still. Relax, Woodson. Let her go. Put down the knife. Please let me go. Oh, I don't think so. Now, you get the hell out of here. Or so help me. I'll open up her throat like a fountain and watch you lap it up. You hurt her, Woodson? I'll make an all-day meal out of you. Bleed you drop by drop. You, you have no clue? What your hero has planned, huh? What are you talking about? Oh, he hasn't killed you yet for a reason. Don't you want to know why? Woodson! Ah, uh, he's grooming you. He's grooming you. You see, that's what they do. He's grooming you to become a consort. A familiar. Someone to handle affairs while he's sleeping during the day. Provide him with fresh victims, a steady diet and attend to whatever other sordid needs and desires he might have at night. <laughs> What's that? You, you probably scarcely had any notion these goddamn freaks existed in the real world, <laughs> right? <laughs> Until now. Okay. You win, Woodson. Corey, no. I'm packing off. Please don't leave me here. Oh, you're better off, trust me. Don't leave, please. I tried, kiddo. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what possesses me at this moment to do what I'm about to do. I guess I'm just fed up. Fed up with feeling helpless. Fed up because I never envisioned myself as the damsel in distress type. I feel Woodson's grip on me loosen. He relaxes the knife from my neck. Oh, Christ. Oh, help me. Help me. Help me. Maybe you're wondering what just happened. I just plunged a knife deep into Woodson's chest. You hear about people that black out traumatic events, wipe the slate clean. Maybe one day I can do that with this moment. Just black it all out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's not worth your tears. What are you doing? The poor creature in the basement deserves one last meal. For God's sake! No! No! <laughs> Seal this door shut so nobody comes along, gets an unpleasant surprise. Oh my god. What did I do? What did I just. Don't blame yourself. I killed a man. You didn't have a choice. I can't believe. Are you okay? Hell no. I'm not okay. Get away from me. Hey, I'm not gonna hurt you. You were getting ready to leave me here. That's not true. Yes, you were. Why do you think I. Listen, he had a knife to your throat. I had to back off. Couldn't take a chance of him... of him killing you. Why? What am I to you? Nothing. If you're really one of them, like that whatever it is below, some kind of vampire, then why do you care? It's a long story. I'm not going to be your little helper or whatever if that's what you have in mind, okay? You can forget it. I don't need a little helper. Why didn't you tell me who you were, what you were? Because it usually doesn't go over real well. Well, I'm glad we dodged that bullet, because otherwise everything just turned out sunshine and rainbows. Oh, and one more thing? To hell with you! 
So with that, I staged my big exit into a torrential downpour. Maybe a bit overdramatic, you might say, but I'm pissed. And sometimes it's just what you do when you're pissed. I go straight home. I'm done. The world is an upside down place to me now. I can't comprehend what took place. I'm in total shock. I lock myself in my room, bury my head in a pillow, and wish this upside down world would just right itself. Nikki, are you okay? Yeah, Grandma. I'm just not feeling so great. You have been in there all day. Can I get you anything? No, thanks. I'll be okay. All right, baby girl. Call me if you need me. It's after dark when I hear Corey's car pull in next door. I guess that makes sense. Vampires don't roam about in daylight, do they? I mean, those are the rules. I meet Corey outside as he packs a duffel bag and tosses it into the car. He wears a hoodie pulled low over his face. I can't see him well, but his hands look burnt. Where are you off to? Hey, don't sweat it. I took care of things. The police may ask you a few questions if they ever find the bodies, but it shouldn't come back on you. What do I say? Say whatever you want to. They might look at you a little sideways if you spout tales about vampires, though. Are you okay? Yeah. Took longer than I planned. Got a little sunburn. Ouch. It'll heal. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be such a little... Pain in the ass? I was gonna say bitch, but that works too. No apology necessary. I'm not sure what I would have done if you hadn't come along. You know, Woodson was right about one thing. I am a monster. I don't believe that. Yeah, well, I've done a lot of stuff I am proud of. Been trying to make up for it in recent years, but I guess you never truly make amends. Not when you're saddled with something like this. Monsters don't have morals. You do. You don't really know me, Nikki. Why did you come back? Why did you come back to Red Hill if you were just going to leave again? I got roots here. And no matter what this place is now or how far it's fallen from the town it used to be, it's still home. It's nice to visit once in a while. I'm not going to rat you out. You don't have to skip town. Yeah. Well, there's still some scores to settle. Maybe you do need an assistant. I mean, I'm not volunteering, but... (laughs) I got this far without one. I think I'll be all right. So, you're immortal, right? You weren't pals with Play-Doh or something crazy like that, were you? Nah, I'm not quite that old. (sighs) Do me a favor. Give this to your grandma. The guitar? She doesn't play, you know. Yeah, you said she was a metalhead when she was young, so I figured she might dig it. It's autographed by some guy she might know. Wait a minute. Did you know her? Just tell Grandma you picked it up at a yard sale or something. So long. Maybe we'll bump into each other again someday, but if not, have yourself a good life, kiddo. With that last awkward exchange, he's off into the night. And I'm left standing in the rain, filled with a mix of confused emotions, like one of those silly young adult novels I used to order from a scholastic flyer. What in the world were you doing out there? It's been pouring buckets all day. Just saying goodbye to the neighbor. Oh, okay. Uh Uh-huh. Uh Uh-huh. What's that mean? I don't know. You two spending a lot of time together. Trust me, it's not like that, Grandma. Here, you better dry off. What do you got there? He gave you a guitar? Actually, this is for you. For me? 
Yeah, I was um telling him how you used to be a hard rock groupie. Groupie? <laughs> I was hardly a groupie. Yeah, well, he figured you might like it or something. <gasps> Holy Moses! Nikki! Yeah? Is this real? <laughs> I... It's a genuine Gibson. Look at the signatures. Oh, yeah? Do you have any idea on... Where did you get this from? Corey. He was the one renting the place next door. Did you just say... Corey? Yeah. Do you know him? Oh, my God. Are you okay? Whoa. <laughs> Grandma, you're really weirding me out here. Come here. What is it? Just tell me. Oh, my goodness. Sit down. I need to show you something. One of your home movies? What does that have to do with... Shh. Just watch. Oh, look who's all decked out. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Smile big for the camera. Come on. What's with you in that thing? Since when are you camera shy? You are a royal pest. Big baby. Hey, kiddo, don't you have a screaming brat to take care of? Okay. Now, is this the same Corey you're talking about? Yeah. That's him, but how this is... This video was taken long before you were born. Almost 40 years ago. That's my brother, your Uncle Corey. That is him. He looks exactly the same. He looks exactly the same. Best brother a girl could ask for. Oh my God. I haven't seen him in quite a few years. Why, what happened? Corey was a roadie for several big-time rock tours back when I was your age. Moved him around city to city, one venue to another. Ha, huh. never became such a big shot, though, that he couldn't nab his little sister primo seats or backstage passes. <laughs> Kept a watchful eye out, too. Kept me out of trouble most of the time. Unfortunately, in his travels... Corey got mixed up with this soulless vixen named Sylvia. You know the type. Wicked hair and nails, perky tits. Oh, you could tell she was trouble from a mile off. At least if you weren't thinking with your dick. Grandma. I'll tell you. That's one seductress could have had any guy in the band, but for some reason she chose him. A poor sap from Red Hill. Anyway... After he hooked up with that pale bitch, we didn't see much of Corey anymore. No, he was never quite the same. Moved away, kept to himself. Sometimes he might send a postcard or two. I wasn't even sure he was even still alive. He made me a promise, though. Oh, yeah? What was it? Son of a bitch. Said he would bring me an autographed guitar one day. I guess. He kept his promise. Families. They're like a generational quilt. Passed on through the years. Comfortable, well-worn, and warm. But if you pull one delicate thread, one all-important strand, it can all unravel fall apart. <sighs> I debate whether or not to tell Grandma the reason why Corey must have felt it so necessary to leave his family, his loved ones behind. But I decide that these things are best left unspoken. And truthfully, I doubt she would believe me anyway. So, things have changed for me. Nowadays, I don't have to get up quite as early. Sometimes I even hit the snooze. No, I haven't become an unemployed bum. Just decided to make a slight career adjustment. Nope. 
not operating heavy machinery either. That would be a hazard to all involved. Hey, ma'am! Ma'am! You're not allowed to be on the yellow tape! What are you guys doing out here? Ma'am! You need to clear the area! Okay, we'll do. But can you answer a question or two? Uh, you're a reporter, I guess? Nikki Russo, Red Hill Gazette. Oh, for Pete's sake, you'd be better off talking to the sheriff. This whole deal is part of a police investigation. Why are you excavating the old Langford store? Well, for starters, the site was condemned. You know, it burned down a couple of months ago, and what's left is an insurance liability. Right. So what's with the crime scene tape? Look, I don't have time for this. I've got work to do. Hey, I don't have to mention names. Just fill me in on what you know. Otherwise, people start to speculate, draw their own conclusions. You know how it works. All right, all right. The way I hear it, some kind of spook hunters or paranormal kooks were poking around these burnt-out ruins the other day. They stumbled onto some bodies down in the basement. Bodies? How many? Three, from what I gather. Three bodies? Just three? Yeah. At this point, I doubt we'll find more. We've turned the whole place upside down and ain't found nothing else. Have they ID'd them yet? There wasn't much left to ID, but, well, all I know is two males, one female. Looks like one might be that policeman that went missing. Officer Matta. Of course, nobody will know for sure until forensics come back. My money? I bet this whole scene has something to do with those disappearances a couple months back. Excuse me. Hey! Unload that forklift and get the excavator over here. We need to get a move on before we lose light. Come on now, let's move! Only three bodies in the rubble, when there should have been four, counting Fangbone. The prospect of some feral, subhuman creature with a taste for human blood on the loose? Well, that is a little worrisome. In fact, I'll classify it under downright disturbing. So, let's recap, shall we? Apparently, there's a black market for blood that few people know exists, and unscrupulous dealers that sell it to the children of the night. To top it all off, my long-lost uncle happens to be a legit vampire. I mean, technically, I never witnessed him drink the red stuff, but it's safe to say all the evidence points in that direction. Which begs a question. I wonder how many more of them are out there. How many living in the shadows of small towns just like Red Hill? Maybe living in quiet, unassuming neighborhoods, right next door to normal folks like me and my grandma. Or maybe even you. have been listening to Campfire Radio Theater. Tonight's tale, Ties of Blood, was the concluding chapter of a play written, produced, and directed by John Ballantyne. Production assistance and additional voice direction by Jared Rivett. Featured in the cast were Tracy Clifton as Nikki. Graham Rowett as Corey, Monique Bagwell as Grandma, John Ballantyne as Woodson, and Matthew Boudreau as the construction foreman. Original music score by Kevin Hartnell. Sound design by John Ballantyne. Additional sound, courtesy of Free Sound Project. Mix and post-production by John Ballantyne. Share the horror and visit us at CampfireRadioTheater.com and on Facebook at Campfire Radio Theater. <laughs>